a facilitator at OLLI for hearing matters study groups. And she is a 40 plus years user of hearing aids and assistive technology. And um, so thank you, Judy, for sharing your, your life experiences and expertise with us. Is she? Okay, I think I unmuted. Can I be heard? You can yeah. now. Great. Thank you very much for that introduction. I am I am thrilled to be here. I am delighted to share my my hearing loss journey. And uh hopefully we will be able to help you all, who I applaud for for attending, by the way. You know, hearing loss is a is a bluffable <laughs> kind of challenge in life. If you were to look at me and I, you didn't know what I was talking about and why I was here, would you know I have hearing loss? No, no. That's one of the challenges. Hearing loss is an invisible disability. It's up to those of us with hearing loss to let our communications partners know and for us to understand and advocate and educate ourselves about what do we need to be, to be functioning. Uh, let me move right into the PowerPoints. When you have hearing loss, the more sensory input you get, the better. So I don't want to over gesture, but I tend to do that. And that's why we have PowerPoints. The more ways you get the communication, the easier it is to comprehend. This is a disclaimer, standard disclaimer. If I go off the cuff, it's on me. And then none of, none of the, uh, the organizations with which I'm affiliated have any responsibility. This is really important. Um, this is from the National Academies of Sciences. And I happened to be at the, at the readout a number of years ago. I had recently retired when, when this research was published. And it's led to lots of awareness of hearing loss as a, as a, uh, a community health issue. The effects of hearing loss on communications and as a consequence, social interactions and functional abilities have serious public implications. And we'll talk about why. And there's uh, tons of research now doing, being done in this area. Uh, from AARP, hearing loss have a more negative impact on quality of life than obesity, diabetes, strokes, or even cancer. Why is that? Because if we can't communicate, we're isolating ourselves. <laughs> uh, I, didn't, I didn't talk about questions or comments. Uh, I, I hope this is an interactive program. I, I plan to talk for maybe 30 minutes and then open it up to, to questions, uh, you know, as long as you'd like. If you have something that's a really pressing issue, raise your hand and we'll try to get to it. Or what's probably easier to be sure we get the, the broad overview initially is if you can post your question in chat and we'll address all of those at the conclusion. Does that work for everybody? Yeah. I don't know how you all administrators usually handle Q&A, but that, that seems to be useful in this situation. Thank you. Well, yeah, we'd leave it to your discretion as to how you want to handle it, but we'll be glad okay. to moderate the chats. Okay. Uh -huh. um, we, I, I, I broached this. You wouldn't know I had hearing loss. How can others know if I have hearing loss? I have you know, to tell you. them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have to, and I... Uh, I'll, I'll talk about my personal journey, but I bluffed for a lot of years and bluffing is emotionally and physically exhausting and frustrating. <laughs> it's uh, I kind of learned the hard way, which is why I'm delighted to share my experience and hope of having others who don't have to learn quite that hard way. Um, one of the biggest challenges in the hearing loss community is that people don't want to say they have hearing loss. Mm -hmm. I now have moderately severe hearing loss. I wear bilateral power hearing aids. I've worn hearing aids for, and starting in my 30s, 40 years. Wow. Um, and when I was, before I retired at 70, six or seven years ago now, uh, you know, I kind of had a bubble. I had staff. I had a team. I could kind of protect myself. About, the technology wasn't as good, but I could be sure I was in situations with people you know, who could take notes at a meeting. Well, when I retired, it's like losing your help desk. All of a sudden, it was just me. And I really had to, to come to terms with acknowledging that my hearing loss was preventing me from living the, the quality of life I wanted to. So this is a question for you all to think about. 
if you think you have hearing loss, what are you doing about it? <laughs> and if not, why not? And I'll give some statistics. You're not alone. <laughs> a little bit about a little bit about my hearing loss it says journey. It should be challenge. Um, I currently have moderately severe loss. The spectrum is mild, moderate, severe, profound. Profound loss indicates you probably should consider cochlear implants, and we'll we'll address that briefly in a moment. Um, as I said, I started out with a hearing aid in my left ear. When my son was born, I had some hearing loss complications. And then my he personal hearing loss, and everyone's story is different and unique. That's the thing about hearing loss. No one, we're not going to go to a doctor and get 20-20 vision like you can with eyeglasses. Mm -hmm. Everyone's challenges are unique. In my situation, my hearing loss is partly genetic. And this is a major motivator for me, which is why I'm, I, I really appreciate these opportunities to, to share with people. My dad uh, passed away in his late 80s, he retired in his 60s, and he had genetic hearing loss in his 60s. Back in the day, power aids were uh, analog. He never even knew if the battery was working in his hearing aid. There was no awareness. It was not a macho thing to say, I have hearing losses and this is how what I need to communicate effectively. And it was it was really an unfortunate thing to observe because he's a very dynamic man. He was an elected leader, uh, coach baseball, and his world shrunk. And in this day and age with technology and awareness, uh, that need not be how we live our lives. Um, and a little 60s rock and roll, you know, at my age, we all kind of had too much music. Kids these days, especially you know, are probably damaging their ears. I retired, decided not to bluff, and I Googled uh, hearing loss in DC and found the Hearing Loss Association of America. Uh, that has really been a, a, uh, a lifeline for me to learn about hearing loss. What are some of the ways I can mitigate hearing loss? And being a community of people where it's okay to say, what'd you say? I mean, when people share, in hearing loss, there's a much greater appreciation because there's no vis visual cues. I joined the board of HLIADC, my first volunteer, and we welcome volunteers and attendees at our meetings. Uh, just let me know how we can, you know, put you on our email list or we have a website. I'll give you that information later. Um, first thing I did was brought snacks to a meeting at Tenley Library. Uh, you know, as uh, as Erica mentioned, we now have many more virtual programs, of course, but you're welcome. They're free of charge. And you just learn a lot and meet people who, through their life experiences, can be very helpful. Um, and I also facilitate a course called Hearing Matters at AU. That's about an eight week, 12 hour course. So today we're going to try to cover highlights uh, in, in about in about an hour. So the focus of today is how do you recognize and evaluate hearing loss? If you're if you're attending this program, you probably may have had, you know, a, a spouse or a child or a friend say, gee, you might want to check your hearing. Uh, we're going to learn how to use critical communication strategies. The essence of hearing is starting with the sound source. If my sound source is a mumbler, uh -huh. all the technology is not going to help me here. So make sure you understand your sound source. Um, and then how do we adapt hearing assistive technologies to support hearing loss? You know, in this in this day of the Internet of Things, there are so many resources. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some free apps, some voice to text, what your hearing aid should include as basics. Um, and then the Americans with Disabilities Act. A lot of the things we are ourselves can help ourselves with communication strategy, hearing aids, technology. But the Americans with Disabilities Act recognizes hearing loss. And so with large venues, um, government agencies, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'll tell you stories about DC council meetings forever, they have a, an obligation to provide accessibility for those of us with hearing loss. Okay, to the big question. 
I'm not going to read these, but take a look if you would. Do you do you find any of these are an issue with you? Yes. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, the first indication for people with hearing loss certainly was for me is uh, ambient noise in large groups. With my work, mm -hmm. I did a business development. I did a lot of entertaining. And uh, I could no longer host a table of six or eight people. Couldn't do it. Go right. to a reception. I, I couldn't be in the middle of the room and hear things with music. That's oftentimes the first real. The other one is, is on the phone. Uh, you have trouble hearing on the phone. Um, and what about, what about TV? I mean, that was an issue with, mm -hmm. with my son and me. Mom, why does the TV have to be so loud? Well, because yeah. I couldn't hear it. <laughs> okay can i move on you got these yeah well know that you are not alone here is the data from the, the national institutes on deafness and other communications disorder which is part of nih 25 percent of seniors in their 60s 50 percent in their 70s and 80 percent in their 80s wow have functional hearing loss wow. no we never talk about this <laughs> because that's not a visible disability and we can bluff as I did for a very long time. It's not the healthy way to live. And we'll talk about some of the, 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 uh, the, the, the wellness implications of not being able to communicate effectively. And this latest data from the journal of pediatrics, um, you know, take a look around. I live near AU and kids, 80% of kids have something stuck in their year. 80% is a, my random number, many have some kind of device stuck in their ear. Well, that can affect your hearing loss. I have a two and a half year old grandson and um, th there's no genetic reason he should have hearing loss. But when my uh, son and daughter-in-law take him to nationals game or to a concert, they have uh, uh, sound dampening headphones because little kids ears um, are, are, are vulnerable. Hmm. How's my pace? Too fast, too slow? Well, that's good. Okay, good. Thank you for that mm -hmm. feedback. I welcome feedback. <laughs> Here's some stats. Um, 48 million Americans have hearing loss. It's the third most prevalent health issue in older adults. Uh, it's associated, and here's where it becomes really critical. Increasingly, research is being done right here in, uh, at Johns Hopkins and University of Maryland doing some wonderful work increasingly hearing loss is associated with cognitive issues. And we know the data supports the fact that hearing loss is associated with increased falls. And as we age, falling is, is always a concern. Why is that? Because if you can't hear sounds coming from behind you or around you, or you're focused on, on trying to hear, you're, you're more likely to stumble. Mm -hmm. So it's not just only about hearing. This, this is a, an alarming statistic to me. On average, hearing aid users wait seven to 10 years after the initial diagnosis before being fitted for hearing aids. Why is that? It's expensive. <laughs> well, it, they, they can be, but there are increasing technologies where they're, they're less expensive. We'll get to that. But actually, research was done in the UK where they provide uh, free hearing aids, part of the, the, the government health plan. This number did not change. It's mostly people's willingness to step up and say, I have hearing loss and I need some, I need some help. This, is, this, this statistic is from the World Health Organization, which now, by the way, has a whole task force about global hearing loss because they're now realizing the social and economic implications if people like my dad can no longer contribute to society. 80% of people who could benefit from hearing aids do not use them. And this number is true in the United States as well. That's a pretty sobering statistic. Yeah. 50 million Americans experience tinnitus. I don't know if you all are aware of tinnitus, but it's also mm -hmm. all, often comorbid with hearing loss. And when you get noises in your head that aren't can't be traced to anything real, it can be pretty maddening until you realize what it is and find some ways to mitigate it. 
So if you think you have hearing loss, and we all looked at some of that, that checklist earlier, what should you do? Well, first of all is to, you know, sit up and say, I think I have hearing loss. I think I need to be, to look into this and acknowledge it, own it, which is a current buzzword these days. Your primary care doctor is often a place to start. I just, and this is a teachable moment maybe, I just got over sinusitis. And so I started with my primary in the last month or so, I'm still taking medicine, but I, I know it's affecting my hearing and I'm very uh, covetous about my hearing, obviously. So I had sinusitis, went to my primary care. She gave me some meds, wasn't fixing this, this blockage. Went to my ENT, he gave me some meds, did an examination, even did a, a CAT scan. They didn't find anything structural. And then once I'm through my meds, I will see my audiologist. My audiologist is my partner to with better hearing. The audiologist is the person who actually assesses your hearing in a very minute way. And you can go to, I'll give you our website address and see examples of audiograms. I spent decades having an audiologist examine, you know, you go in the room, they close the door, you hear the beep, yeah. beep. Decades, not understanding how to read the audiogram. And then the audiologist would say, well, I think you need new hearing aids and we need to change this and that. And this is what it's going to cost. The more you know about the audiogram, particularly with all the technologies that are out there, the better you can drive the right solutions unique to your needs. So get a, get a good audiologist. An audiologist should have a, a terminal doctoral degree, an AUD. Um, in some locations, and particularly in, in re, more remote parts of the country, they have what are called hearing instrument specialists. These are people who can fit a hearing aid, but they're not audiologists. Some retail establishments may use hearing instrument specialists. Um. So the audiogram is really what evaluates the kind of hearing loss you have, the frequency you have of hearing loss, and that then drives the kind of support you need. Um, as I said, the range is mild, moderate, severe, profound. An audiologist should, a good audiologist should provide multiple hearing aid manufacturers. There, there are a handful currently of big name manufacturers. Most are, are, are actually uh, in, in, in Europe. Increasingly, manufacturers are vertically integrating, and this is a caveat. So if you go to the dispenser of hearing aids, they may only sell one or two brands. A good audiologist is going to evaluate your hearing, recommend what's probably best for you. And then if you want to, in, you know, and how much you want to spend for it becomes, becomes your choice. But you don't want to go to a vertically integrated audiology practice because they're going to limit your options. Uh -huh. The other thing when you see an audiologist is ensure that it is a collaborative discussion. If you're a person who uh, thinks you have hearing loss, you spend most of your time in a small apartment doing research, the audiologist needs to know that. I tend to be outgoing. I want to socialize. I want to go to restaurants. I want to go to theater. Um, the audiologist needs to understand your lifestyle because the solutions that could be best recommended really depend on what are the situations in which you'd like to be able to hear better. Many of us, that's restaurants, telephone, um, large social gatherings. And the big caveat, because it's kind of becoming the Wild West these days in some ways with um, uh, over-the-counter hearing aids. In 2022, largely based on the Academy's research, uh, the hearing aid space, they didn't even call it hearing aids anymore. They call them hearables. The whole, the whole nomenclature is changing. Uh, that whole space now offers, if you have a mild or perhaps moderate hearing loss, what are called over-the-counter hearing aids. The FDA approved these to be called hearing aids in 2022. You may have seen some of these promoted. You do not need to go to an audiology office. Oftentimes you can go online, you can do a self-test online and they'll ship you the hearing aids. And for some people, this works just fine. Uh, I was at a, a meeting the other day with a, uh, a renowned audiologist and the analogy he made was, 
you know, what, what, what kind of, what, what, what kind of car do you want? I drive a 10 year old Subaru it works for me. I just bounce around town a little bit. If I were going to do a lot of highway driving, I might want a Tesla. So again, it depends on what kind of mm -hmm. capability do you, do you want? The challenge with the over the counter hearing aids is you do not have the wit and wisdom in handing hand holding, which I rely on with my degree of loss from my audiologist. You want to really be careful with over the counter. Uh, although they're FDA approved, there's a lot out there who are going in and out of business rapidly. You mm -hmm. want to be sure that you can you can test them, you can return them, and find out what kind of support they have. Uh, can I move on? Yeah. Good. I have a question. Yes. Uh, have you heard of Miracle A, uh, Miracle Ear? Yes. Are they serious? <laughs> Dep depends on what you need. Huh. Because we're advertising really a lot on the Washington Post. Yes, they are. And they test you and they tell you they're all over the United States that they are the best. Uh, and I don't know whether we can really trust them or. That's, you know, advertising is advertising, right? Marketing can say pretty much what they want. The first thing I have heard of Miracle Air, I honestly have never had an experience personally with Miracle Air. You have to be very, very careful of those advertised, whether it's TV or magazines or whatever, hearing aids. When it comes to providing the best solution for your needs. So I can't say if Miracle Ear is good or bad. It depends on what you need. If your hearing loss is modest, you don't want to deal with an audiologist. You're comfortable fitting your own hearing aid, which I never would be. Uh, that, might, that might work for you. What you do not want to do is buy what are called personal sound amplification systems. Personal, called PSAPs, personal sound amplification systems existed in all the media promo before the FDA approved over-the-counter hearing aids. PSAPs only increase volume. Now, I've been in the retirement communities where that works just fine. You know, someone who doesn't have the dexterity to manipulate a hearing aid and so forth. But the risk is you could over-amplify. They're not yeah. FDA approved and they advertise all the time. So you do not want that. Okay, thank you. Okay, I mean, it, it, there's not going to be one one good answer for everyone. It's really, um, it's, I, I starting I, in my experience, starting with an audiologist to determine what you need, and you may not need hearing aids. Maybe communication strategies. It may be simply as much as reminding people, look at me when you talk to me, please. Yeah. Options to consider if you are going to get hearing aids. Not the over-the-counter kind, but you know, see an audiologist if your hearing is is moderate or worse. You should have a T coil. Yeah, that's T that's coils cool. were first released uh, to enable people to use a telephone with hearing aids, a telephone coil, T coil for short. Now there are many venues. Uh, Tenley Library, where HLIA chapter holds a lot of our meetings, has a T coil. So if you have hearing aids. You enter this room, which has a T-coil. You In the old, well, my hearing aids before this, you'd flip a switch, your T-coil would be on, and you would be in direct communication with the microphone, the sound source. Oh, now, with like that? T-coil? Hmm? What exactly is it? T-coil? T, it, it's, it's T called a T-coil. C-O-I-L. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Yeah, and a, a T coil. You when you get hearing aids from an audiologist, you want to be sure you have a T coil because it allows accessibility in many venues. Uh, okay. Now, having said that, dig a little deeper. The right now, my I have a my hearing aids are about three years old. All my programs, and I'll talk about programs, are on my phone. So I click on my T-coil program if I'm in the Tenley library and I'm immediately directed to the speaker. So there's no dissonance. There's no uh, um, noise in between the speaker and my ears. 
that's goals. Okay. Uh, hearing aids these days often offer noise reduction. I have a program for that. If I go into a restaurant, I can choose the restaurant. Do I want to hear the speaker? Do I want clarity? Um, you know, digitalization has made a huge difference in hearing aids. Right. Directional mics. Um, do I want to hear what's in front of me? Do I want more of a range around me? These are all options. Bluetooth. Mm. Did I hear did I hear a comment question? Okay. Um, Bluetooth. If you're getting hearing aids, you definitely want Bluetooth capability. That's become available in the last couple of years. I'm, I'm sure you're all familiar with Bluetooth. With my hearing aids, with Bluetooth, I for this for this uh, Zoom program, I enabled my Bluetooth to my computer. The sound comes directly from the computer source to my ears. So there's no huh. ambient noise, which means I hear better. I can connect Bluetooth to my uh, to my television, which I do. So I don't, you know, the volume can be okay for other people. Uh, connects to my telephone. Um, so you also really want to consider Bluetooth. It's been a game changer for me. Variable programming. I mentioned that a moment ago. So I, my hearing aids are, and these are called power aids because I need it. There are variable programs. I can, you know, flip on my TV program, my computer program. Uh, I was talking to a gentleman the other day, which I loved. He had his audiologist program, um, a program specifically for his teenage granddaughter. Because, you know, preteens and teens talk at a different, they talk at a different range and very hard to understand. And that worked for him. What a joy. You know, I mean, we didn't, we didn't get very far with my two and a half year old toddler grandson because that's, that sound source is not going to be, uh, be fixed. And synchronization. If you have two hearing aids, you want to be sure that, you want to be sure that you have the capability to sync them. So you're not having to tune one and then the other one and then both of them. That's, this is the benefit of a good audiologist. They're going to know all this and be able to share with you. Okay, this this has all, this is kind of a maxed out page. And I'll go over this quickly because there are so many ways to help people improve quality of life with hearing loss these days. Hearing aids, of course, first step if you have hearing loss. Cochlear implants. I don't know if you're familiar with cochlear implants. If hearing loss becomes severe, we hear with our brain. You can bypass your ear. And with the cochlear implant, probably seen people with these circular magnets. It's a surgical procedure, lots of rehab because you have to relearn how to hear. Um, but, but, you know, again, another opportunity to, to improve your ability to communicate. People like me with uh, moderate hearing loss, I tend sometimes to rely on captions like I'm doing here. I mean, I, 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 hear, I hear Bluetooth, but if it's something specific I want, I'm talking to my broker, I'm talking to my insurance company, whatever. I rely on captions to be sure I'm not missing the details. The devil's always in the details. And with hearing loss, and so many people on the other end of a phone may not, maybe English is a second language. I find captions is just my safety net to be sure I'm getting what I need to get. Um, FaceTime, none of this was true, by the way, pre COVID. And the Hearing Loss Association, National Association of the Deaf, got very involved, lots of petitions, tens of thousands of signatures to make sure that FaceTime is captioned. So when you make FaceTime calls, you can now have captions if you want them. Skype is now captioned. Zoom, of course, like we're benefiting from today. Three years ago, you had to have a, a very expensive level of service to get captions on Zoom. Well, ADA says it needs to be accessible. That changed. Um, there's a terrific new Apple program. I'm, I'm an Apple person. I don't know if any of you are Android or Apple people, but you can go into, if you have an, an iPhone, Go into settings, go into accessibility and choose captions and you can call up an icon free so that anytime I get a phone call, it, I can choose to have it captioned. I do this with FaceTime all the time. 
non-telecommunications apps that are uh, the one I'm going to recommend. There's a couple out there. Is the first one NAL Scribe National Acoustic Laboratories out of Australia. It's a free app. Uh, it has a wonderful voice to text. I use it all the time in medical appointments, particularly in the last few weeks when this ear was 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 gunky and clogged up. Uh, it is uh, it is uh, not an issue with HIPAA. Sometimes you have to remind your doctor of that. Uh, but it it and you can keep a transcript. So if you're dealing with something pretty heavy duty, you may want to have a transcript to go back and refer to it. These are all free. Telecommunications. Um, a lot of people, their first challenges are with the phone. There are two free services for those of us with hearing loss. One is CapTel, which is a landline. I have one in my office and one upstairs in my living room. You have to self-certify that you have hearing loss and it's a captioned telephone. Uh, the other, which, you know, given, given the last few years with mobility, is a service I highly recommend called Inno Captions. It's the last line on your, on your PowerPoint. This is on your mobile phone. Free app, load it. You, incoming or outgoing calls, you use the same mobile phone number, and it's captions. And you can still speak. You can still have audio both ways. Um, again, if I'm getting a, 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 a random call coming through, I want and I I want to be sure I get it. I always I, I'll use my my inner caption. Now, some of these are many of these services are for the general public, and they just happen to really benefit the hard of hearing community. Some of these services are specifically for the hard of hearing community. And oh, by the way, they can really benefit the general public, like the ESL population. Okay, just a couple more minutes. Um, safety, safety is always a concern. Half of those with mild to severe hearing loss will not wake up to a standard auditory alarm. Um, so what are the options? Other sensory devices, flashing lights, uh, signaling systems in a town range that you can hear. Your audiologist can identify that. Tactile, haptic alert. This is not a plug, but I, I'm in love with my Apple Watch because of the haptics. Um, if I'm getting a phone call, it, it, it doesn't ring, which means I'm not going to interrupt our call. Or I mean, I hear it if I have my hearing aids out, which you shouldn't. You should always wear your hearing aids to make sure your brain is functioning optimally. But it tells me if I have a call, I have a ring at my both doors or someone's at my door, it, it vibrates, it tells me. Um, it tells me if I have fallen and if I don't respond within 60 seconds, there's an immediate alert out to uh, the uh, uh, DC 911. And in my case, I designated my son. Um, again, not a plug, but it has so many uses many of which those of us in the hearing loss community are just are just now kind of realizing. Americans with Disabilities Act. So far, we talked about the things that I can do, you can do as a person with hearing loss. There's also legal requirements for accessibility. Uh, I, won't, I won't read this statement, but it's... Uh, uh, you know, when you're dealing with government agencies, large venues, you have rights to have accessibility to hearing. Here's the challenge. And I found this when I first started getting involved. Most accessibility focuses on mobility, right? You know, you build ramps, you have people in wheelchairs, you have a walker, very visible. What you need to do to fix it is, is, is quite obvious. Even people who are blind, and I'm not, I'm not minimizing any of these disabilities. They're all very, very important. You know, you see a cane or, you're, or they're, they're wearing certain glasses. You, you have cues, deafness. If you see people who are deaf, it's, it's actually, I think, on some of the newscasts, pretty interesting. I don't know American Sign Language. Most people with hearing loss, the vast majority do not know American Sign Language. But in these days of Instagram, American Sign Language is very um, compelling. So you know if someone is deaf. How do we know if we're hard of hearing? How do we know if I'm ignoring you or I'm not hearing you? I'm reminded of this great line from Abraham Lincoln. 
uh, who said, you know, it's better to remain silent and be thought a fool than speak up and remove all doubt. I mean, I was guilty of that. How often would I remove myself from a conversation because I might not be getting the details that would make me relevant? What happens when we do that? Well, what happens is it's frustrating, it's exhausting, and it's increasingly costing, uh, you know, our, our physical and mental health. It's becoming isolation, loneliness, those kinds of things. So if you want to hear, what do you want to avoid? You want to avoid distractions. You want to avoid ambient noise. Sound bounces off walls and objects. You want to avoid distance. Within even a hearing age range is about six feet from the speaker. I remember growing up, my mom and dad would be in the house and my dad would be in his chair reading. My mom would be in the kitchen and she'd be saying, oh, Charlie, I really want to make you a special meal. Uh, and all he heard was her yelling. <laughs> you know, you have to be proximate to the sound source. Assistive listening sy systems, which ADA accessibility rules dictate. Um, it, it's a simple concept of catch and carry, the sound source and the receiver. I don't need to go into technically what happens, but there are different types of systems and it's good to familiarize yourself. So when you go into a venue, you know what to expect and what to do. Induction loops, like we talked about DC library, all at AU classrooms have loops. Frequency modulation, I attend the National Presbyterian Church. I, I go for a service, I get a receiver, I, I flip my, my switch and I have direct, it seats 1500 people, I get direct linked um, to, the, to the, the pastor or the, or the people singing. Now, what I can't do is offline speak to someone next to me because I have a direct link, that's a Bluetooth issue. And infrared, a lot of uh, major entertainment venues use, uh, use infrared. Challenge with infrared is if you have a pillar or post, the sound won't go through it. So you need to be aware of these things if you want to do these things. And in summary, Shari Ebert has a wonderful uh, uh, blog. It says, living with hearing loss requires knowledge, practice, and a healthy attitude. If, you know, advocate, 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 advocate. If you don't say, this is this is how it is, this is what I need, I'd like to communicate with you, but to do so, let's talk about how we can do that. Now, I find that with family gatherings like this weekend maybe coming up, 30 seconds after I remind family, they're ignoring what I just asked for. So you have to kind of keep at it, but that's that's the nature of having it invisible. Sometimes I'll push my hair back and I'll just point, you know, remind people. Uh, we advocated strenuously in the last three years to get an office of deaf, deaf, blind, and hired of hearing. 38 states have such an office. DC did not. The mayor is not supportive. The council finally stepped forward. So if you want some information, here's the, uh, here's the address. You can contact them. Their charter is to make sure that DC government is accessible. Council meetings now will be captioned. Lots of changes in the past three years. If DC government can't resolve accessibility, contact the Office of Disability Rights. When I first got involved, this was the only office in DC that spoke to uh, disabilities and they covered all disabilities. So the visible disabilities got priority. There wasn't even a, a bullet on the website for hearing loss. There was kind of nowhere to go. But if it becomes, uh, you know, a, a, a bordering on an untenable issue, they're the go-to. And of course, on a positive note, is the Hearing Loss Association, which uh, does tremendous research, tremendous, on the, on the first page, let me reiterate, I'll put it in chat, uh, those addresses, hlaadc.org is our local chapter. Lots of information, lots of free programs, good information. We have an archive, like I'm delighted this is being archived. So people who can't be here can actually get the information. You can go there and see past programs that may be of interest to you. And then on a national level, the website is hearing loss, H-E-A-R-I-N-G-L-O-S-S dot -S org. And that's a terrific resource. 
Okay, I talked a lot. Questions, please? Comments? I think you need to unmute. Looking I just must say thank you. Someone with their hands up here. Yeah, yeah, I did it. I thought I'd done it already. Oh. You were going to oh. talk about expense of these things. Remember you said I'll get back to that? Yes. Uh, the In the last, since 2022, when the FDA approved these over-the-counter hearing aids, if you have a mild hearing loss, those may be appropriate. What you usually don't get is the audiologist to help you. I probably see my audiologist two or three times a year to, to make reprogramming changes and stuff. If you don't need that, those can be purchased for uh, hundreds or a couple thousand dollars, but it's caveat emptor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now my mm -hmm. hearing aids, because they're power aids, and I don't say this with any pride, but they, they, I would mortgage the farm to be able to <laughs> communicate better. Um, probably $5,000. That's probably an average for the top end. Now, Medicare does not pay for hearing aids. That's one of those ironies. Medicare yeah. will pay for an annual hearing hearing test with an audiologist, which I highly, highly recommend, even to get a baseline. Um, but if you need hearing aids, they they won't they won't pay for that. Some states, the state of Washington recently passed legislation where they're requiring some payment toward hearing aids. As I mean, as a population ages, this is yeah, this is a necessity. We've had bills pending in in uh, in Congress for years, and they, you know they don't take action. So cost mm -hmm. is a concern. Uh, now, ironically, if your hearing deteriorates to where you have profound loss, most insurance companies and Medicare will pay for a cochlear implant. Huh. Go figure. Uh-huh. Do you know anything hmm. about the options at Costco? Someone was asking in the chat. Costco. Costco is always always comes up. Um <laughs> I just had this in my Ali class. We had some discussions. Some people really like Costco, some people do not. Uh you can Google and find articles about pros and cons from reputable audiologists. In my experience, I have never used Costco. In my experience, as I talk with people, and I've facilitated this, this kind of class at Ollie for six or seven years, so I get a lot of input. Um, it's maybe not a bad place to start because I guess they have a free hearing test. You may or not be seeing an audiologist, uh, pros and cons. Um, you are going to be limited to certain hearing aid brands, and those certain hearing aid brands do not allow Costco to dispense the full range of options in those hearing aids. The other negative I heard most recently is when you, and they're, they're, you know, there they can be a few thousand dollars at Costco anyway. The other thing I heard recently is Costco, and they changed their policy. I know they just stopped selling Phonak, which I use. Uh, Costco locks, generally locks your hearing aid. So if something goes wrong, you can't go to any audiologist and get it fixed. You have to go back to Costco. Some Costco scores are very busy. This person was telling me it took two or three weeks. The plus is, if this is a plus, in reality, Costco is the single biggest dispenser of hearing aids in the United States. The notion with the academies was with over the counter and the Costco's and whatever is, you know, Maybe better something than nothing. Let's get people thinking about it uh -huh. and maybe doing something. And then inevitably there's kind of a progression, have them understand what they're not getting. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So can you bring your audiogram from your, your audiologist to Costco and they'll... I've had that question as well. Um, Probably, but the solution will not be the gamut of options you may choose, mm -hmm. you may prefer. Do and the audiogram that Costco does is certainly not as encompassing as a as a as an AUD would be. Mm -hmm. Because they also check is your hearing loss conductive? Is it sensorial like mine, where the little hairs in your ears get damaged? Mm -hmm. Um it, it's it, 
pros and cons. If I were to spend a couple of thousand dollars, I would go to an audiologist, but that's me because of my degree of hearing loss. It's like driving my 10 year old Subaru. If that works, use it. <laughs> what do you think of insurance? Not much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, uh, when I was employed, I think my insurance paid for half or something. Or, right, uh, right. Uh, or there's a lot of work being done advocating to try to get better insurance. Mm -hmm. It's an uphill, it's an uphill thing. What's leveraging that is the reality that hearing loss is not just my problem. It's a societal issue. Mm -hmm. Right. And there are, in DC, there is one program in DC that will give you a reasonably uh, reasonable loan rate to buy hearing aids, but DC does not, you know, subsidize. Do you know anything about the new Apple AirPod things for accessibility? You know, I saw that today. I was, I was zooming through some information. Um, not zooming, but scrolling through some information. Not a lot, because I think I understand it's fairly new. Mm -hmm. But that 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 really speaks, you know, Erica, to the whole notion of the hearing space dramatically changing with all these emerging technologies, not necessarily for those of us who have hearing loss, but the, but everyone. So as I understand, and I've never used iPods because I you can't use them with, with hearing aids. As I understood from this article, and maybe you know more, share with us if you did, please. People, I mean, young kids have iPods in their ears constantly. Yeah. iPods, for those, again, like over-the-counter hearing aids with mild hearing loss, um, may be able to support hear that, that hearing loss and a different channel, as it were. Is that, was that, that's, that was kind of my takeaway. Yeah, it sounds like it can do that now, but they're doing even further enhancements and you don't have to replace the little ear thing. You just, the enhancements will be to the software and how it, hmm. it I, I, I don't fully understand. I read just a brief little blurb, but it was fascinating. And it seems like it would reduce a lot of stigma also attached to hearing loss of, you know, you just have little, well, you know, right. there are things like all the kids. Yes. Thank you. You, you know, the, the stigma, the stigma is, I think, self-imposed. Um, how many kids you see these days with things right. in their ears, right? The other the other thing is this whole redefinition of, of communications technology, when given the Internet of Things. There are now hearables, which are not going to help me with my... Uh, uh, moderate hearing loss, but you have a very low hearing loss. There are now hearables that do things like my eye watch does for me. They can, mm -hmm. um, they can, uh, you know, it's just amazing. They can help tell me when I fall. They can, they can hold hundreds of songs that I can call up. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the latest I read was this wonderful quote. The ear is now valuable real estate uh, yeah and and the, the big players the apples the bozies they're, they're 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 doing interesting things in that in that realm but it starts with what is the nature of my hearing loss what are the situations in which i need to have better hearing mm -hmm. elaine hmm. you had a question uh yes i was going to ask about it looks like if you have a hearing aid that you have, you have to be very technologically savvy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, for somebody who is not, who doesn't have, cannot go and have everything readjusted on his or her iPhone, do you have any brand that are simpler that you could recommend to help somebody hear better and not isolate? You know, I am not technologically savvy. I'm a dinosaur. To get into this Zoom program, I had to rely on your 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 capable leadership. I, I mean, I, I I use Zoom all the time and I still don't kind of get what I need to do. So I am not technically savvy. I had the good fortune to be chosen to be part of this 
network of computer uh, consumer hearing assessment technology training program, which was through HLA and Gallia. Yeah, that so I I kind of learned the criteria, but the technology is changing and emerging so fast that you can't learn how to do any one thing. Like what are AirPods for? Well, that's changing. So I think what I did is I, I just started showing up at meetings. Now a lot of those are recorded like this will be and just you know talk to people who've been there and done that. I am, I am a technological dinosaur. Yes, but if you can use an iPhone, you can't have these uh, newest technology. Well, I I happen to be a an Apple. Yeah, I am an user. Apple. But now, not everyone does. Some people who have uh, uh, Android, you know, yeah. that, that's a different category. Yeah. But a lot of this is go to the. I went to the Apple store. I can't tell you how many classes I took at the Apple store. Um, you know, I don't know of an individual who's going to come and help you do these things, but the information is out there if you, you just, you know, you kind of search for it and look for it. And your audiologist is invaluable to show me how to, how to think, do these things. Yeah, I think that's the first, first person to see and have some more. Uh, the audiologist is my, has to be my friend. <laughs> yes, I think, I think that's good. Yeah, thank you. It was very important what all you told us. Because it is very okay. complex and most people have no idea where to start. We've got a couple of comments in and the chat. Um, I'm not on Medicare, instead use my federal retiree insurance, zero for hearing aids. My friends on Medicare find their secondary insurer pays all the cost of their hearing aids. Do you know about this? Like one got $7,500 hearing aids free. No, but I'd love to know more about it. Can you tell me more about that? <laughs> well, I mean, all I, the time we get these questions from people. Uh huh. I have, oh, is that is uh, that is that the, the Medicare? See, I have Medicare, the original, and then there's uh -huh. this newer one which has all these variables. Is is that what you're referring to? I don't. It's in the chat. Uh, Gloria, do, can you tell us? Um. What I uh, no, I think you mean by the other Medicare, it's the Advantage Medicare Advantage, Advantage. yeah, which is different. But um, the person who got the seventy five hundred dollar AIDS free um, is a retired federal employee, but in the diplomatic corps, so probably has a State Department, which is better yeah. than just the regular retiree thing. It, it it depends on exactly. It depends on your coverage. Uh, that that may be. That's wonderful. I'm glad to know that. I was not aware checking. of that. It's worth checking because a med medical ear told my husband that uh, Aetna, which we have as a secondary, and it is a federal um, government program, uh, would only pay about maximum seven to one thousand per year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It, it's, it's worth checking, maybe. Someone else <laughs> says, I have moderate to severe hearing loss. When one of my hearing aids was damaged, a son brought around Sony earbuds he had bought for $800. With a computer program associated with it, they could be programmed to my loss by me pressing a button when I heard a sound. And honestly, for the day or so I wore them, they seemed to be as good as my $5,000 phone X. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, highly, ind highly individual. You know, uh, I've heard people just rave about these, these under $1,000 over the counter, uh, uh, you know, for the public kind of, kind of devices. Depends on your hearing loss. It depends situationally when you need to be able to communicate. If it works, like my old Subaru meets my needs. I have a question. Yeah. In talking to people who may or may not have hearing loss, sometimes you get in a conversation a response that is sort of inappropriate to the question. And as someone having the conversation, you don't know whether it's a cognitive slip or an auditory slip. And do you have any suggestions as to how to deal with those situations? 
that's not an uncommon issue or concern. Uh, and one of the areas of a lot of research is what is the correlation between hearing and cognitive issues. Mm -hmm. You know, aphasia, for example, mm -hmm. that's where a good audiologist is going to figure it out for you. Uh, are, are you. Are you talking from the point of view of you're the listener? As the listener and someone uh, responds to a question uh, inappropriate. that was not the question you asked specifically. And you don't know whether it's because they didn't hear the question properly yeah. or they their mind just took it into another place. In my experience, what I have done is very forthrightly say, um, let me, let me, can we rephrase that? Mm -hmm. Let me re repeat the question. And I wasn't sure I understood your response. Now, if you get the same response, you still don't really have an answer until that person's tested. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. very, very difficult. And, you know, aphasia happens. Um, these issues about cognitive decline happen. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the, the, if, it's a, if it's an individual where you're comfortable, you might talk to them about the potential for, uh, you know, hearing loss. Maybe I misunderstood you, but you, you find people have a challenge sometimes. It's a very delicate situation. No one wants to say, I have a disability. Right. I mean, right. But it's so frustrating when you think that it might be that they just didn't hear you properly and they're totally compass mentis and well, and I have found the, the challenge there realistically is if I say I'm I'm not sure I'm hearing you, that's not giving the information they need. You know, because it's mm -hmm. you, but maybe sound source, maybe them. Mm -hmm. I I don't if you find a good answer, share. Okay. <laughs> Good question. Good it question. happens to me regularly. and Well, you're dealing with, I would assume, an older population. Mm -hmm. And the, statistics, the data demographics are what they are. Mm -hmm. And most people simply don't want to acknowledge. Now, I find it much better to acknowledge I have a hearing loss than to, than to deal with the frustration mm -hmm. that you're describing, which is inevitable if someone isn't able to communicate effectively or be heard. Mm -hmm. No, I have, I have no good answer for you. I'm sorry. Okay. I just thought it was worth a shot. It happens all the time. Uh, that's where, you know, if it's a person where you're comfortable, they probably could use a professional evaluation, mm -hmm. which is not an easy thing to say. No. <laughs> because we, we inherently like to bluff. Oh, it's you. What you know? What's wrong mm -hmm. with your ears? You're I had blurry. a woman in a, in a class once who insisted, insisted everybody was mumbling more. Well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> you got an, a comment in the chat of thank you for this excellent talk, and it really has been wonderful. Yes, I, I. Thank you for so many, so many uh, invaluable information on the subject. Well, I, I I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty committed that you know our lifestyle in this day and age with technology and awareness does not need to be the the shrinking lifestyle of those who had hearing loss in in, in back in the day. Uh, you know, it, it just but we need to we need to step up on it and have these kinds of conversations. I would, I would encourage easy. you, I would encourage you to, to get more information, very rich website at hearingloss.org and our local chapter, hlaadc.org, where we, we welcome, you know, participation. Um, just pick and choose what you want to know more about, because I, I can't say, <laughs> you know, go to the optometrist and get these 2020 glasses. They're going to work for everybody. It's not the world of hearing. And we regularly promote the uh, programs that the Hearing Loss Association. Thank does you very in much. Newsletter because they're fabulous. That's much much appreciated. And if I can, you know, provide anything further to the to the group, let me know, Erica. Thank you. Advocate, advocate, advocate.
<laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Are there any last questions? All right. Well, thank you, Judy. This is okay. Been thank you all very much. Really wonderful. Appreciate it. And thank you, Judy. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Get out.